uh, for success in that field. And while we're not necessarily going to focus all on the core related and more focus up here on our uh, career pathway courses, they are equally as important as uh, in these fields. So I want to point out, if you are interested in uh, participating in our career pathway around information technology and network systems, um, we have a couple different uh, opening points that we would encourage students to consider. Uh, one of which is our computer programming, mobile app development, and networking course that we offer at every single site in District 214. It's a great opportunity for you to get a broad overview of what are the different opportunities within uh, the IT sector, what are the courses like, what are some of the skills and uh, areas of knowledge that you need to uh, develop uh, down the road in order to be successful in this field. But more importantly, it is that point where you can figure out, is this something that I may be interested in committing future years to, to develop my skills, develop my knowledge, or is maybe a career in IT something that wouldn't necessarily interest me and it gives you an opportunity to try a different area. Um, from that point, at that orientation, we, have, uh, we move into some of our skill development coursework. You'll note many of these courses are actually listed as college. Each of these courses provides students with dual credit uh, dual credit is an opportunity for you to get both high school credit on your District 214 high school transcript, while also earning university credit and with our uh, dual credit partner at Harper College. You will actually start your Harper College transcript. So you start getting courses, you start getting grades on that transcript, which would apply to their degree and certificate programs that they offer there. So it's a great chance to get a little bit ahead to start on your path while you're still with us. I'll note, start on your path. Um, from a dollars and cents standpoint at much reduced rate. Um, so it's a great opportunity that we provide to our students. Um, I'll also note many of these courses are also aligned with some of our industry certificates, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but these are opportunities for you guys to walk away with certificate in hand saying, I've developed the skills of an IT professional uh, that are valued and could go on a resume, can be looked at by different employers. Uh, when you leave high school or beyond. The other opportunity that we have is our cybersecurity and programming course. I'll note that opening opportunity is the same exact course between our two different pathways, and that's by design. We're looking at that, that course provides an opportunity with the general knowledge to be able to determine not only if a career in the IT field is for you, but also to give students some idea what is their specialization that they may want to take whether they want to go the hardware side, working with network systems, or going more of the coding side, uh, coding and cybersecurity side. So students can start their pathway by taking computer programming, mobile app development, and networking. And then you'll see they have an opportunity to move on to some subsequent courses. Here you'll note many of these courses are listed as AP. So AP stands for Advanced Placement. In our advanced placement courses, students at the end of the course have an opportunity to take an exam through the college board. And based upon how they do on the college board, again, they can acquire early college credit. This is credit that you can take to any university and move through to apply towards a future degree or certificate within the IT field. So these are some fantastic opportunities that we have for our students. I will note on the tail end, there's an opportunity that our students can do apprenticeships uh, within the IT field. Um, and maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about what those apprenticeship opportunities are, but these are opportunities for you to do on the job training um, with an industry partner directly in their place of work um, so that you're learning while also earning, learning while actually doing work. Um, so what I would stress here, there are two different opportunities within District 214, one which is more on our hardware side, it's our information technology and network systems pathway with an IT. Another one, which is more on that coding side, which we've coined our cybersecurity pathway within District 214, both within the field of IT, both providing students an opportunity. Um, and you guys can see that there are entry points and subsequent classes that you could take if you were interested in a career in this area. So as I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause on my portion of uh, my presentation here, but I'll kind of jump in and out, give some clarity throughout our discussion. Um, but I wanted to give an opportunity, I think the more exciting part uh, than hearing from me talk about our programs is actually hearing from our panelists, talking about our programs and the opportunities that are out there in the field of IT. Um, 
So maybe I'm going to hand it off. And if we work down the list a little bit, uh, so Professor Braunschweig, if you want to uh, maybe introduce yourself, and then we'll work our way down the list with those panelists who have joined us today. Hi, I'm Dave Braunschweig, Professor of Computer Information Systems at Harper College. And I developed the curriculum that you see throughout both your side and then on the Harper side. So the Net 105, 11, 12 courses. And then we also have an information systems uh, sequence that would line up with your cybersecurity as a community college option for getting started on that path. All right, I think we're down to Scott. So, Scott Bell. My name is Scott Bell. I'm the director of the St. Benedict Technology Consortium, which um, is a nonprofit that provides IT support to uh, other schools, certainly within D214 and uh, throughout the region or the D214 area. Um, and uh, so we've been doing that for most of a decade now. And I'll also add that uh, Scott is an apprenticeship host as well. Thank you for that, Scott. Um, I guess I'm next. Uh, hi, my name is Sean Lamb. I am a uh, manager of managed services. I work for uh, CCS Technology Group. We're a managed service provider here based in Rolling Meadows. Uh, we are also a, a D214 apprenticeship host. So nice to meet y'all. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Trent. Uh, I'm a teacher in District 214. I'm, I'm currently at Rolling Meadows High School. Um, as um, <clears throat> Dan Widener alluded to, I, I teach the uh, IT networking side, so the hardware side. Um, and uh, when I get a chance, I'd like to kind of throw a couple things in there as far as the pathway is concerned, but we'll get to that in a bit. But nice to meet you all. Uh, hello, I'm Lucas. I'm a junior at Prospect High School, and uh, I completed an internship at Code Ninjas in July and August, or June and July, so I was able to land a job there, and I really enjoyed my, uh, really enjoyed the internship and the opportunity it provided me. And I don't think we're on this on at this point. All right. I'll introduce myself. Hi, I'm Val Bank. I'm the student success coach at Wheeling. I recruit and enroll students into our internship, internships and apprentice programs. And those are with our partnered industries. And um, yeah, definitely like to talk more about that if um, everybody on here is interested. Oh, no. I think Kathy, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Kathy Wicks. I'm um, the host here for this panel, panel. excited to be here. Um, my role in the district is partnership manager and also apprenticeship program supervisor. So it's exciting for me to be on a panel um, where we have some partners who have provided these really rich, authentic work-based opportunities uh, to students uh, in this pathway. Looking forward to, to the discussion. All right. Um, so I'm going to move over to the panel. For our panelists, if you want me to put up anything from the slides, I definitely can, but I'm going to pull those down from now, uh, as you guys are really the highlight of the next uh, half hour or so. Um, so maybe I'll start with our, our industry folk. Um, so we talk about, and I'll say industry and post-secondary, everybody can kind of join in on this one. Um, when we talk about the field of IT, um, you know, individuals may jump to a couple specific careers that they have in mind. Um, but I will say, from my experience, the field of IT is a really, really broad uh, field that involves a lot of different careers, a lot of different jobs, a lot of different positions. Um, so can you guys talk about um, some of the kind of the core uh, career opportunities with IT, but also talk about some of the expanse of that field from uh, your perspectives? So maybe, oh, are we trying to unmute there? Uh, so really, what, what are some different career opportunities that students who are interested in the field of IT, where, where might they be going and what are some of those jobs like? Should we just jump in? Sorry. Go for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I should have I should have given clear. Uh, yeah, you guys can just kind of jump in at any point throughout this. 
Thanks, Sean. Or Scott. So yeah, you know, obviously uh, we're hiring technicians in the field doing, uh, you know, repairs, doing uh, computer setups, right? You know, hundreds of Chromebooks, thousands of iPads, uh, you know, in uh, the education and nonprofit space. Um, we have network engineers, we have security engineers. Um, we work with a lot of folks doing uh, cabling and low voltage and wireless design, things like that. Um, it, you know, it, and obviously all of the industries that are, you know, one step removed from that, right? You know, the hardware vendors who are <laughs> designing stuff and using, uh, using engineers to do that and so forth. And, uh, and almost everybody that we work with has, you know, a sales engineer, a customer engineer, and, and we spend a lot of time as engineers working with the customers, also talking to the engineers of the company, right? And so, um, that's all pretty much the same training, right? You, know, you have to know how the products work. You have to know how the environment works that they're going to be put into. Um, and, it, you know, so you can absolutely start off as a technician that way. You can absolutely start off as a network engineer that way. You can absolutely start off, um, you know, having done this in the environment because, it, again, you know, we mostly work in, in sort of supporting schools, but a great many of the people that I talk to are like, oh yeah, I was a principal, I was an IT director, I was a, you know, I, I worked in the space, um, but I was also doing this IT stuff or I started doing the IT stuff and I know something about the space and also something about IT, um, and, you know, and, and that is great for this, right? You know, you, you can have multiple interests, right? You know, you can say, look, I, it, you know, I did all this stuff with, uh, you know, being an EMT or a nurse and I, and I, um, but I always like tech stuff, right? <laughs> and so when you do, it, you know, something is something along those lines. Um, and so, it, you know, but definitely, um, you know, those, those core things, right? You know, the hands-on the people in the field, um, it, you know, are in super high demand, right? We are, um, you know, we're constantly growing. We're constantly hiring. I'm getting calls from my, you know, colleagues and competitors saying, you know, do you have anybody who's maybe not quite, uh, you know, in your region anymore, who you're looking to send up to Milwaukee or something like that. That's a, a great, to, to piggyback off of that, um, you know, one of the great things about the, the IT field at the moment is just how pervasive it is. Uh, you, you, I mean, they're, they're literally, a, you would be hard pressed to imagine a business that's running itself in any capacity these days uh, without the need uh, for experts in IT, you know, we uh, are, we're at CCS, we're a managed service provider. Uh, we're, you know, we'd like to think that we're a tech firm, but really we're, we're a, we're a service industry. Uh, we have customers in, you know, uh, commercial real estate in finance. Uh, we have several customers who do uh, large woodworking projects. And, you know, you'd like to think that's just a bunch of folks sitting around with uh, a shop that smells like sawdust, but there's some incredibly complex uh, technology behind all of that. And, uh, and at the end of the day, everybody needs help uh, maintaining and running those systems. And uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity uh, if you're curious and you love that technology aspect of it, but you have other interests, uh, you, you can absolutely find ways to serve both of those uh, at the same time. And uh, I believe Scott also kind of touched on this uh, pretty much anywhere because there's so much of our work uh, that's remote or not necessarily tied to any geographical area uh, that really opens up a whole lot of freedom uh, for the people that we work with, you know, we hired a, a, a guy in Dallas last, uh, last week, actually, um, for a customer that we have with the Chicago offices, but they needed on-site support. And there's just, uh, countless opportunities along those lines. All right. So, um, I'm hearing countless opportunities. I'm hearing a lot of different areas and a lot of different flexibilities that we can uh, that we can go down. So maybe I'm going to uh, go to the front end of the opportunity. Mr. Drunk, I'm going to come over your way. Um, what are some of those ways within our high school curriculum that students can start learning about and learning the skills uh, that are needed for that? And maybe also, Dave, while I continue forward, how are those skills then continued forward uh, with formal education as they go into a university program, getting either a degree or a cert? Uh, sure. Um, so essentially at the, at the high school level, we, we really focus on 
a lot of, of just uh, learning kind of the tech, getting a lot of hands-on experience with, with a lot of the technology that we do. Um, and going through the curriculum, a lot of it developed by Dave. Um, but one of the key things that we really focus on, not only uh, curriculum in the class, is outside opportunities as well. We have a Cyber Patriot competition that we have um, um, uh, a number of the schools have kids getting opportunities in that. Uh, we do National Cyber League. Uh, we do competitions at Illinois State. Uh, so it's not only getting that hands-on uh, experience in the classroom, working you know, on IT fundamentals with basically everything, A plus really kind of focusing more on kind of uh, the PCs um, uh, and networking, but then the networking, uh, getting their hands on switches and, and servers and things like that. Um, but it's really also focusing on those outside opportunities as well. Dave? And, and I'd say we, we continue that. Uh, students who come from D214 could come in already with two years of experience, two years of dual credit in those net courses. So you would be those courses ahead in your curriculum. You'd essentially be a, a full semester's worth of classes or you'd only have three semesters left at Harper if you've done the full series uh, at D214. So uh, that's a money-saving opportunity. It's a time-saving opportunity. The other thing I really want to point out with this is that it's uh, what we in the field call stackable. You can come in, get your A-plus certification, and then uh, contact Scott. And I guarantee you, if you're A-plus certified, Scott has a place that he can put you tomorrow that he can keep you busy. Uh, so if you've got A plus, you can go out and work and you don't even have to wait for high school graduation. Please graduate high school, but you don't have to wait for graduation in order to get that part-time job and get started. Uh, once you've got your A plus certification, then you wanna look at the network plus certification so that you can go on to the back end side, setting up the network, setting up hopefully some of the router switches, certainly the access points so that uh, the network is gonna work with the infrastructure that uh, your client is asking you to create. Once you go past that, then we're gonna look at server side, uh, both Windows servers and Linux servers. We're gonna look at a full uh, CCNA certification course. We will also look at the Security Plus and Cloud Plus. Uh, so our full Harper curriculum in networking includes seven certifications, most of them CompTIA. And what we found is the more certifications that you have and can document, the better chance you're going to have at getting an interview, getting that first job, getting your foot in the door, and then moving up. And it really is just a, you're constantly learning. Uh, if you think of any device that you have that is more than five years old, what are the chances you're still using that in an IT capacity? And it becomes really remote. So uh, anything you know that's five years old probably doesn't apply anymore. So for the rest of your career in this field, you're always learning, always growing, always adding one more thing to your toolbox because somebody's going to want it uh, just around the corner. So to, I to add something really uh, quick, okay, Dan. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks, Dave. Um, the, uh, the CompTIA exams that Dave spoke about um, that are offered at Harper, we actually uh, prep our kids to take those at, at the high school level as well. So not only the IT fundamentals exam, but both A plus exams, the network plus exam and the security plus exam uh, are, are exams that we focus on in the curriculum at, the, at uh, in District 214, especially at Rolling Meadows and at uh, Hersey High School. So I just kind of wanted to add that as well. And one more thing, if, if, you, if you don't mind, Dan, I kind of wanted to push a little bit the uh, apprenticeship program um, that's offered uh, through the district. I know that when he showed that pathway, they showed the apprenticeship program for the um, cybersecurity side, but uh, a number of our IT uh, students, actually four, uh, four of my students from last year are, are in the apprenticeship program right now, um, where they took, they took my coursework starting freshman year, they didn't take the mobile apps, but then they took all the courses through our, our pathway and then are in the apprenticeship program, which I think Kathy might speak about. And it's been a great experience for them. Um, and so there's there's a lot of experiences uh, for the, kid through the uh, kids through the district that we offer. 
Dave, or Brian, Mike, you kind of given me a better transition there. So thank you. Um, so Mike's talking about um, you know, our apprenticeship program. We've had individuals talk about you know, the in-class experiences and the in-class hands-on. We started talking about employers and some of the opportunities. Um, one of the very unique things that we have in District 214 out of our Center for Career Discovery is we provide students with an opportunity to do both internships. Um, and I believe, uh, yeah, Lucas has said that he had interned at Code Ninja. So I want, uh, maybe in a moment, Lucas, you can warm up and I'd love you to be able to talk about that experience and how you got into that work. And then maybe I'll kick it over to uh, Val and Kathy to talk about some of the ways that students can get involved with internships and also how do apprenticeships and opportunities like that also focus in. So maybe Lucas, we'll start with you. So um, you did an internship as a high school student at Code Ninja. Can you talk a little bit about some of what you did before that, what the internship was like and what you might have uh, taken away from that? Yeah, um, so in terms of before, I would say maybe like two, three years ago, that's when I started to realize I really liked like computer science. I would say I've always liked uh, science. So it was mostly just like teaching myself programming languages, concepts, stuff like that. And uh, since I've been at Prospect, I've been you know taking the computer science classes they offer. Freshman year, I did the mobile app development Last year, I did the computer science principles, which is an AP course, and the cyber class. I wasn't a huge fan of cyber, but I'm still happy I took it just to know more what my interests are. And when I did the app development, there's like a certification you can do. Like if you, you take a test from like Apple, and if you get a certain score, you get like this uh, certification. I did that, and I met the score requirements, so... And then this year I'm taking AP computer science. And then I found out about this internship around probably this time last year. And that's when I sort of realized that I can be getting some, you know, work experience connections and start to realize like, okay, I like computer science, but is this actually what I want to do? So, you know, I got in contact with uh, Code Ninjas, which was the place that uh, I think Mrs. Wasted told, or one of the internship uh, directors told me about. And in June, July, that's when I started the internship. It was just five days a week, only like three hours. So it wasn't a lot of work. I wouldn't say it was that hard, but it was, you know, enjoying. So it was teaching like little kids, like the basics of computer science that I learned, you know, several years ago. So I would say I really enjoyed it. I would say that it also let me know that while I liked it, I wouldn't really want to be like a teacher of that, but it was still a really fun experience. And you know, great community, just more connections and work experience and all that. So I would say it was a really good experience. That's awesome. And I would say, Lucas, if you walked out with knowing that there's some things you like about a field and some things that maybe you didn't, that is our exact hope that we have for our interns that go out there. Obviously, we would love everybody to land and go, this is the exact thing I want to do for the rest of my life. But I'll say having that experience as a, that was between junior, senior year, right? Uh, sophomore, junior. Oh, a... yeah. There we go. Between sophomore, junior year, starting to kind of refine some of your path. Um, yeah. That's a home run. And thanks for sharing about that. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, so as L Lucas and uh, Mr. Drent kind of alluded to, we have both internships, which are some of these shorter term experiences that students can do, whether it be over summer or over a semester. Uh, but we also have a very unique opportunity with youth apprenticeships and apprenticeships here in the district. I'm going to kick that over uh, to Ms. Wicks and Ms. Beck, Ms. Beck uh, to kind of talk through uh, what those opportunities are. Sure, I'll hop in. Um, first, uh, apprenticeship is a, a work-based learning opportunity that is a little bit more in-depth than an internship. It's available to rising juniors. Uh, we really work with the career pathway teachers like Mr. Drent. He really has helped us kind of identify students or shoulder tap students and say, hey, this my opportunity might be for you. It is um, an earn and learn opportunity. It is a Department of Labor registered apprenticeship in two specific areas, one in cybersecurity, the other in IT generalist. 
uh, help desk. And uh, we have Scott and Sean on the call as our industry partners. They're both hosting um, two of Mike's students um, in the IT generalist pathway and our two cyber apprentices are actually employed with District 214. So when I say earn and learn, um, this opportunity starts the summer in between junior and senior year. Uh, it is an application process with an interview. You are hired by the employer. You are earning a paycheck. You are um, working on the job, learning from these professionals with certain competencies in place. Um, there is a lot of work to be done in order to complete this apprenticeship by the time you graduate. You work anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 hours for that year, which averages around 30 hours a week. Plus you're earning your obviously high school diploma. We want you to graduate. So during your senior year, your schedule is a little bit non-traditional and the fact that we want to give you lots of blocks of time so you can work with your employer, but we are also enrolled typically in dual credit English and math. And then you are enrolled either in additional Harper coursework related to the um, IT generalist pathway or you're enrolled in Moraine Valley Valley Community College if you're into the cybersecurity pathway. So it really is a very robust um, program and is a really great springboard to the workforce. Um, both of the employers that are on here, you know, hire, hire qualified candidates. So what better qualified candidate than someone that they've trained and worked with for a whole year um, if they want to stay on, or if you want to go on to a, a two-year two year college and finish at Harper or go on to a four-year, this is a great springboard uh, for that as well. And if students are interested in that, their starting point is Ms. Bank, who is a success coach or any of the other success coaches in the building can tell you more about apprenticeship program, internship program, and how to apply. And Val let you, um, Ms. Bank, talk a little bit more about how they can find a student success coach and what you can do to support them. Yeah, so um, if, if you haven't met your um, student success coach, um, go ahead and look them up. Your counselor can tell you who the one is at your school. And what we do is the um, internships start for our students who are at least 16 years old. And we have, um, we offer fall, spring and summer, and you have your choice of 30 or 60 hours um, to choose from. And um, the sooner you find your coach, they can guide you to the courses that you need to take in that pathway. They'll help you to the um, enrollment process. They'll let you know when the applica application deadline is. And any questions you have, and with placement, we talk about learning like, you know, what, what, actually what you actually like in that career path and we try to place you as close as we can so you get that experience that you want that hands-on learning experience so the sooner you find your coach um it'd be a lot more easy easier to get into that internship all right lots and lots and lots of exciting opportunities within this field most definitely um so scott and sean so i'm I'm going to put on my hat of a, uh, a parent or a student who's kind of sitting on this call right now. And I've heard a lot of things of, I can go the path of getting degrees, whether it be an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. I've heard about industry certifications. I've heard about workplace learning experience and actually getting the on the job experience um, before actually getting employed. Can you guys um, talk a little bit from the, the role of an employer? Um, what are some of the values and what are you guys looking for um, from people that get employed in your field related to kind of real on the job training, real work, degrees, certifications, and how, how do those play together uh, within the field of IT? Wow. Yeah. Sean, go ahead. I was going to say, you, you kind of teed me up to just uh, tell you guys all my entire life story here. Uh, not really. Uh, Dave actually touched on a lot of it. Um, my, my educational uh, pathway to where I'm at now was a, a long and winding road to nowhere. And if I want to talk from the perspective of a parent here real quick, um, I don't even want to tell you how many years and various college majors and the associated tens of thousands of dollars I spent uh, not settling on a degree. Uh, and my eventual entry into IT was very much the um, CompTIA A plus, Net plus, Security plus certifications uh, that they touched on earlier that your uh, students have an opportunity to earn uh, before you even exit high school. Uh, it's, a, it's a really shortcut way to finding uh, your way into a potentially very lucrative career path. And 
it's something that, uh, you know, even, um, I apologize, uh, our, our uh, intern that's on the panelist here today touched on, uh, even if it ends up not being the thing that you know you want to do forever, uh, to me, it seems like a very, very economical way to figure that out rather than going the, the pathway of a four-year degree, uh, getting into a career and then finding out, oh, hey, maybe this really isn't for me. Um, the, the industry certifications are, are fantastic. And uh, in addition to being relatively attainable and inexpensive, uh, they also do offer the advantage, which again was touched on earlier, uh, of keeping up with the times. You don't have to wait for university curriculum to be updated uh, and make its way to you. It's, it's constantly sort of staying on top of the state of the art. Uh, and I'll just close with one more thing here. Um, one of my company's values, which we have, you know, plastered on all the walls is, is the student mentality. And, and if you can get into that now, uh, keep learning, keep up with the tech forever. There's really no reason uh, why, why you won't have uh, opportunities for the rest of your, your career here. Um, so anyway, I, I apologize if, if I got a little bit off of uh, the topic here, but uh, that was just sort of my experience with it. And so, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, you know, to, expand on that and and you know we've talked about this a little bit um you know start now right you know start with apprenticeships right i we have actually hired uh two students who had a plus certifications who had just graduated d214 who were you know 18 years old and we really like part-time folks we're a nonprofit, right and and we can absolutely schedule around that we have a bunch of employees currently and have had for many years who um, are college students, right? You know, oh, I have class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Great. Come work for me two days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, in the field you're studying. <laughs> Continue to get certifications if you want to, uh, if that is, you know, appropriate to your area of study. You are building your resume as you're doing that. It's a job that you enjoy. You are applying the things that you're doing in class. Everybody wins, right? You know, you you win as a learner, you win as a student, it, you know, we win as an employer, having <laughs> talented people who are, you know, currently getting trained. Um, and the fact is that, you know, again, you can you can graduate high school with this stuff. And you know, the, the apprenticeships are paid, right? You know, you can do an apprenticeship while in high school and engage in this. And if there's not an apprenticeship available, it, you know, you can still do part-time work for somebody. You can still, um, it, you know, look for those opportunities and, it, and it, you know, they are absolutely out there, right? And definitely in college, um, you know, of course, come work for us, we're, we're in the area, right? <laughs> but, uh, but um, it, you know, every college has got a, a, a almost 100% student run help desk, right? You know, a, a support um, network of some type that they're going to have you do. And the fact is that, you know, once again, you don't, you don't have to go to, you know, a four year or a four plus one, you know, accelerated program or anything like that. It, you know, it, it actually takes a certain amount of the pressure off and is, is this wonderful revelation to people because, you know, if they're working two days a week for us, and they come in over the summer after their first year, and I say, okay, well, why don't you spend three months working five days a week? You now know what it's going to feel like to be a full-time technician, whether that's right for you, whether you want more, whether you want to double down on, you know, security or technician or networking or whatever it is, you know, within the scope that you like, um, you have that capacity, and we're talking about you know, you could be doing that, you know, the summer after you graduate high school, right? You know, if you got the A plus, whether you did the apprenticeship or not, right? And you'd absolutely be doing that and have the job lined up before you've ever set foot on campus freshman year, right? You know, we've got students who are, you know, who are all over the place. We've got Harbor students and, and Oakton students and Loyola students and DePaul students and Northwestern students and just, you know, everybody floating in the region who happens to live you know, in the Northwest suburbs, and they're, they're working here um, very happily, right? This is not the kind of thing where you, where you have to say, okay, well, it's four years after I graduated high school, I wonder what the working world is going to look like. You could do that during high school, and by all means, do so. 
And maybe I'm going to, um, and by all means, I shared in the chat. If uh, students or parents, if you have any questions, uh, please either share them in the chat. Um, I see a couple have come in. I'll queue up to those in a moment, but I'm going to take Scott's comment that he had right there at the end. And Lucas, I'm going to come back your way. Um, so Scott was talking about being able to figure out and use the opportunity while you're in high school, having different types of opportunities to figure out your future. Uh, so Lucas, maybe what are some of your post-secondary plans or goals? And uh, how is District 214, the classes that you've taken, um, the experiences that you've had, how have those helped you prepare for that future? Um, well, I'm a bit undecided in terms of exactly what, but in the way uh, District 214 has helped, of course, this internship experience, but I would also say uh, some of the classes I'm taking this year, uh, AP Computer Science, not a huge fan of the language they use, but it's certainly within the like domain of what I want to do. But I would say even more so would be like the BC Cal class I'm taking. Um, I've always liked math, and of course, there's a lot of uh, intersection between math and computer science. So I would say mostly this year and the last year classes I've taken and this experience uh, certainly helped. In terms of what I want to do or, or study, I would say... I really, uh, one subset of computer science I really like is like artificial intelligence, which is a lot of that math and computer science sort of crossroad. So I would say if I went to like college for that, I don't know if there's like a degree in that, but probably just something, you know, majoring in like computer science with a lot of math classes or something along those lines and deciding from there. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Lucas. And I think, honestly, you you keyed up very, very nicely with one of the questions that came in at the chat. Um, and really what the question talked about, maybe we'll look, Mr. Drunt or uh, Dave, if you want to talk on this one. Um, so what are some of the connections, maybe for somebody who might be undecided, whether, you know, is computer science or IT, I don't know if I really want to go into a job in that field. Um, or I might have interest in other areas. Where where can experiences with an IT help connect with other career fields? Um, so really, if I don't want to go and become network engineer, an IT specialist, et cetera, et cetera, but maybe I have some interest in this area, how do they connect with other career opportunities? Mike, did you want to hit it first or? Okay, um, one of the first things you said was IT and computer science, and I want to address that real quick for everyone's perspective, and it comes down to something Lucas said, and that is your math background. If you have a math background like Lucas, and you're doing your AP computer science and your AP BC calc, you are definitely on the computer science side of things, or you can be. And I want to clarify it that way because I had that background, but then also had the experience that Sean did. I started in computer science and it didn't work out well for me. And then I took some time off and unloaded trucks for a living. And then I came back to computers because I missed it. And so I am a Harper graduate as well as uh, I did Roosevelt and then uh, University of Phoenix for my master's degree. But the point being that if you have really good math skills, you can go anywhere on that uh, range that you want. You can go all the way to the computer science, the design aspects. You can come back and do the information systems and programming. You can come back and do the networking because you really like the hands-on devices. Or you can do more of a user interface and what we call UX or user experience. Uh, and that can be developing websites from the front end. It could be an IT project management role. It could be a leadership role where you understand the technology, but you'd rather have somebody else do the work in that field. And so depending on your math abilities, you can go anywhere on that uh, range you want. If you have a less math skill or math isn't your favorite class, let's say, then you want to look more at either information systems or the IT uh, information technology and hands-on aspects, simply because it's applied math rather than the engineering math. You don't need the calculus. We're much more interested in you getting statistics and being able to apply that background. 
As for how it touches on everything else, I would say look at the IT fundamentals, that Net 105 class uh, that you guys offer. That is your overview of everything information technology related in one semester. And so you can pick that up in one semester and you'll know immediately, I really like this, I'd like to do more of it, or okay, well, if it comes up, I can answer those questions, but I'm glad we have uh, Scott's company to come in and do the support for us so I don't have to do it every week. And so that's kind of the background that I would say you wanna look at and, and where it touches on. And then the other thing that you've said yourself is uh, you want to take classes to find out, is this something you wanna do? One of the best things I ever did was take an accounting class. I found out that I never want to do accounting again in my life. It was a great experience because I know here's something I can check off I don't want to do again. And there were other things that I did. I'm like, yeah, I did well, well at that. Maybe I can do more of those classes. And you follow along with that. So, you know, as much as we'd like to see education be a plan, and I know as a sophomore in high school, I'm going to go do this, that's maybe 10% of students. Uh, the reality is two thirds of students change their major in college. They're going to have a different plan. They're going to, so you're going to find something you like. You're going to follow that path, and and so you know enjoy the ride, and and learn and grow as you do it. I love it. All right, I'm looking, and we are right about at seven forty six, and I think our wrap up time officially was seven forty five. So I may do one more whip around if uh, we're going to go with, if there's a final word, a final word of advice is we have about, you know, 25 students on here, 25 families related to anything that we talked about this evening or the field of IT or opportunities. Um, what are some of your lasting words? We'll go about 10, 15 seconds a piece. So we're, we're super brief here. So how about Mr. Draft? You got to go first. Yeah, I, I, I just would like to just say if, if there's ever any questions of anybody at, at District 214, uh, just come talk to us. Uh, the teachers are always more than willing to kind of talk to you about stuff. You can come in a class and check it out, talk to some students. So, you know, ask as many questions as possible. We're always willing to help. All right. Throw it over to Sean. Uh, I'll, I'll say it again. Uh, live that student mentality. Start now. Uh, try some things out. Uh, if you don't love it, you don't love it. But, uh, you know, it, it, this is a great, great way to, to knock some of those things off of your list or to get a really great head start. And uh, this is the program I, I wish I would have known about or had at my high school. So I uh, can't speak highly enough of it. All right. I think Dave. Uh, I dropped my email address and a link to our degree information in the chat. Anybody has questions, please contact me. I'd be glad to answer your questions. All right, over to Val. Yeah, yeah, if you're interested in an internship or an apprenticeship or want to explore a pathway, you're not sure what you want to do is find your coach and they can get you started on the right track. All right, Kathy, you got anything for us? I echo all of the wisdom of the panel. It's been really amazing. And thanks to all the parents and families who are listening to this. Um, take it and run with it. The world is your oyster. You're lucky to be enrolled in D214. Tons of experiences, opportunities, and great partners. All right, Scott. The one extra piece of advice I have is to give yourselves credit. Um, I get resumes all the time and they're like, oh, well, I worked in a restaurant. I did this other thing. And then I get to talking to them. I'm like, well, I built my home network and I built the four PCs for my family. And I went, tell people that, right? You may not have professional experience because you're starting out, but tell people about your hobbies, tell people about, you know, cyber club, about all of the things that you are doing in IT, because that's really marketable. I have people who show up who say, I've only ever waited tables and I've never turned on a computer before. Okay, well, uh, let me find the next resume in the stack, right? Mm -hmm. Tell people about your interests and the hobby things you've done, whether anyone's ever paid you for it or not. And that matters. All right, I'm gonna leave it with Lucas. Lucas is our student voice. What What do you want to say to any of your uh, other fellow students out there as a word of advice? Um, I would say just uh, make the utmost importance of just finding what you really enjoy doing, what you're really good at, and establishing connections in that field. 
they have people to fall back on and you know learn from them learn from all the experience that you'll gain i was going to try to put something on the tail end but i think lucas summed that one up amazingly well so um i appreciate everybody coming on here uh this evening i hope that this was beneficial as you're making some of your decisions for next year and figuring out how to navigate pathways uh, within and beyond District 214. Uh, we wish you luck and I will say we are all here um, to help support you guys along that journey. Um, and it starts with today. Um, and you're doing the right thing by here, being here today. Uh, think about your future. Um, so let's go for it. Wish you a fantastic evening. I would say drive safe, but I think everybody's at home. So there we are. Um, so thank you for the time. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and wish you best of luck. Have a great evening.